Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you the Widmanstaten pattern. It's a specific type of material that's impossible to create on Earth. So in order to make this structure, you need molten iron and nickel mixed together. And then you need to cool it down. And you need to cool it down really slow. And when I say slow, I mean slow. You need to cool it at about one degree Celsius per million years. And if you can do that, you'll end up with this structure. Now iron meteorites are only about 5% of the total meteorites that hit Earth, but they're really easy to find because you can use a magnet to find them, and also they tend to stay around longer and have a specific look to them. Now if you can find a really big meteorite and cut it open, you'll find something really interesting. Now if you're really good at finding meteorites, you can find one like this one. This is a real meteorite from Russia. If you cut this open, you'll get something that looks like this. If it's a metal meteorite and you polish it, it will just look like polished metal. But if you put some acid on it, you'll notice a specific pattern that forms. This pattern here is the crystals of two different iron nickel alloys, one called tannite and the other one called camasite. And these are really big crystal structures and they take a long time to form. So really the only way to create this is to have a molten iron nickel and cool it over tens of thousands of millions of years. And if you can do that, you get this structure here. That's why it's so impossible to create on Earth. So what happens is the mother asteroid is molten or really hot and over millions of years it cools down in outer space and eventually it ends up striking Earth or little pieces of it strike Earth and you end up with these little pieces that have cooled at the right rate to have these large crystal structures. And before we continue, I'd like to thank NordVPN for sponsoring this video. NordVPN uses military-grade encryption to keep you anonymous when you're using the internet. It uses thousands of servers all over the world and it can bypass internet firewalls. Also, NordVPN is implementing an add-on to your browser called Threat Protection, which will help protect you from malicious websites, malware, and trackers, even if you aren't currently connected to the VPN. If you don't use a VPN, everything that you do over your internet connection can potentially be hacked or it can be seen by your internet provider. So if you'd like to secure your and your family's internet usage, head over to nordvpn.com slash the Action Lab VPN. Now let's get back to our experiment. Now the reason this happened is because iron and nickel can form several different structures. One of them is called tenite and the other one is called camasite. And in order to form these, you need different amounts of nickel in each of them. So as you cool the iron and nickel down, tenite can form, and it's no longer a liquid, it's a solid now. But if you give it enough time, the nickel can actually diffuse out of the tenite and form a new structure called camasite. And the camasite continues to grow at a very slow rate. So the name of the structure that's impossible to create on Earth is a little confusing. Because the pattern is so recognizable, the name has been used for other crystal structures that look like it. So there's this real structure found only in meteorites, but then there's also structures called Widmanstaten structures that are not that special that are found in regular carbon still that look similar, but they're smaller. Also, people even use the name for any grain structure that has a regular pattern in it, which makes it even more confusing. So the real stuff is only found in meteors. Also, before I end, if you're wondering why I have cuts all over my face, kind of a funny story. I didn't get in a fight with a weed whacker. What happened is I was trying to film my son kicking a big red ball while he was on the swing, and I told him to kick it at me while I film in slow motion because I wanted the ball to hit the camera and it would look funny but what I forgot about was momentum. So I was filming like this, as soon as the ball hit it, it must have been going like 30 miles an hour because the phone just shot out of my hand, hit me in the nose, hit my cheek there, my nose started bleeding, I thought I broke my nose, but it was from my phone hitting my face. Here's the slow motion footage of it. And thanks again for watching another episode of The Action Lab, I hope you liked it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet. And you can also hit the bell so you can be notified when I do release my videos. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.